You're watching The Breakdown, seen exclusively at ATV.ca and A Sports Extra. I'm Norman James, along with Merrick Sutherland and Brent Lael. What a huge week. UFC 129 about to go down in Toronto in an historic event uh, in terms of UFC being in Ontario. It's about to happen less than a week away. Everybody's talking about GSP, Jake Shields. Uh, if we have some time, we can discuss that fight, whether it's a mismatch or whether uh, GSP is uh, actually chewing his fingernails, but, you know, Mark Hominick versus Scarface Jose Aldo for the featherweight title. Uh, that, in, in my opinion, is going to be the fight of the night. Uh, are we just talking Mark up because he's from our neck of the woods, or do you think we're onto something? If there's anyone that has the punching power to put Aldo down, it's going to be Mark Hominick. I told you this before, I don't see this going past three rounds. Somebody's going to be on the floor looking up. Uh, Jose Aldo, uh, you, you got to think that he is taking Mark Hominick seriously. He went to Europe to study with a, a master or a guru on the hill uh, to make sure that he is ready for what Mark, Mark Hominick is going to bring him. Um, do you think Aldo has something to prove based on maybe wanting to stand up with Mark and uh, the naysayers having them put, putting them in their place saying, hey, I can fight on the ground, I can fight uh, standing up, and I'll fight Mark Hominick at his game and beat him. The thing with Aldo, his strikes are lightning fast, and there's a lot of power behind them. So he's going to stand up. There's no question. This is going to be fought mm -hmm. standing up. And, and you're right. It's going to be fighting that candidate before going in because this will be a war. Not a lot of smack talking going on between Aldo and Hominick. We know Mark is a classy guy, and yeah. Jose Aldo can't even speak the language. <laughs> um, do, do you think that sort of uh, curtails some of the excitement around this fight, or do you believe that, hey, since it's Hominick in his home province, the first ever UFC event in Ontario, it really doesn't matter. Let's see them fight. Yeah, it's pretty hard to smack talk through an interpreter. Yeah. That doesn't really, doesn't really work so well. But <laughs> Hominick, you know, he's just such a low-key, classy, mm -hmm focus exactly on what his task is he's you know he's just that type of guy so I don't think he'd ever be the guy in a guy who would smack talk somebody other than just boasting his own confidence because he knows how good of a fighter he is and one of the neat things I heard him say earlier is is when people get in the ring with Aldo their first thing is they're scared of him so when he comes at him they back up mm -hmm. well Hominick's not going to do that he knows that his punching power and his stand-up game is as solid as anybody's so when other people are backing up against Aldo he's going to go right at him and that could be interesting to see how Aldo handles that. There's something scary about Mark Hominick. I'm not saying he's a bad guy. He's a fantastic guy, uh, soon to be a new father. Uh, but I don't know if it's an ulterior motive, uh, if there's just something behind those eyes, like, don't mess with me. Do you know what I'm talking about? You, you can't do this without having that kind of dark side. Mm -hmm. you know. And he's got it. He doesn't have it outside the octagon. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's the nicest guy you could ever talk to. But when the, when, <laughs> when the cage shots, you know, there's something that goes off in him, and, and it's game time. And when he's, when he's on a mission, like he was against George Roop, when he knew that that title was exactly what he had to get, he had to win that fight against Roop to get that title shot, would it take him all of 30 seconds to destroy him? So, and that you know, fight was you an exception much, because Roop was a friend of his, yeah. and he could have ended him much mm -hmm. sooner. Yeah, and you know, and that shows how, how focused he is on what he had to do, that he knew he was only one win away mm -hmm. from a championship fight, and in 20 seconds, it was over, bam, business taken care of. You look at Jose Aldo's work on YouTube and the <laughs> comments are, uh, it, a lot of people are in awe, they're shocked to yeah. see just how dominant he can be. We talk about how this is the stiffest test Mark Hominick's ever faced in the octagon, but you have to think for Jose Aldo, uh, this is going to be the pr potentially the stiffest test he's ever faced because Mark is arguably the best pound for pound puncher uh, clearly in the division and maybe in all of UFC. Uh, no, no question. And you know, it, it, it takes one shot. Mm -hmm. You takes one shot. If you stun him, he's down. It's game over. Okay. So although minus two hundred, uh, <laughs> the odds. So that means you'd have to put a deuce down on him to get a hundred dollars back. So mm -hmm. he is the favorite. He is the champion. He's won eleven fights in a row. He's eighteen and one. Fine. How does Mark Hominick win this thing? And do you think he can? Oh, I think he can, absolutely. There's no question. He, it, it, it's going to come down. I don't see this being a, uh, a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu demonstration. I don't see there being a lot of, maybe some stuff up against the cages, maybe some dirty boxing, but this is going to be all out, stand up. It's going to be a war. It's going to be ugly. I think it goes the distance, Merrick. I know that you've yeah. disagreed with me in the past. You think it might go too. Somebody yeah. is going to dominate. Uh, wh what do you th envision uh, from I this I think match? when there's so many stand, when there's stand up guys like that, I think you said at this level, it's it's these guys can knock each other out pretty quick. Um, I don't know that it goes the distance, but I honestly right now would have to flip a coin to see who, who's going to yeah. win it. Can you imagine where this would take Mark Hominick, a victory of course, <laughs> where this would take his stature, not only in Canadian mixed martial arts, but around the world? Well, you know what? 
he obviously he doesn't get a lot of respect. We've seen the rankings. He's got way down there. Yeah. He's got to win. And if he wins, mm -hmm. it's just a basic. And he knows what his rankings are. And if that isn't going to fuel him, he's just going <laughs> to just kind of flip it to all those critics. Yeah, he when he when he's on a mission and he has something focused in the way he trains and the way he has his mindset on what he needs mm -hmm. to do. I don't know how you could ever count him out. Mm -hmm. One word to describe Mark Hominick, mercenary. And I think uh, we're going to be uh, given a, a demonstration of just how much of a mercenary Mark Hominick can be at UFC 129. Real quick, guys, Jake Shields versus GSP. It is the uh, co-headline event. GSP not taking Jake Shields lightly. Uh, Steve Cofield from 1100 ESPN in Las Vegas. He's the cage writer at Yahoo Sports telling me that he thinks Jake Shields has a better ground game than GSP and that could come into play at UFC 129. Merrick, your take real quick. I don't agree. I, I, I don't agree. I think GSP has proven that his ground game uh, is an elite level of mm -hmm. wrestling. He's wrestled elite wrestlers and out wrestled them, you know? But the thing with GSP, and it's the Matt Sarah factor, is that every fight he goes into, he thinks it could just jump up and get a submission. You have, you have to have that paranoia. Yeah. Uh, do you think Shields uh, GSP turns into another GSP Hardy where it's just GSP twisting and turning his opponent for five rounds until the final bell goes? I, I think the cost check fight uh, it, was, it was very telling, mm -hmm. is that he's developed um, an, an amazing stand-up game yeah. with the boxing, and it, I've heard that he was wants to incorporate a lot of his karate in this zone. So, and that was where he started. Okay, so from your perspective, Mark Hominick can win, yes. GSP will win. Absolutely, no In question. a knockout? Uh, I would love to say yes, but all his matches have been going to the decision, so you gotta go with that. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, before we go, shout out to the St. Thomas Stars. Yeah, definitely an amazing season. Uh, you know, they won their first title in 15 years. It's unfortunate that they kind of let it slip away from them when they had a chance to get to the Sutherland Cup Championship Series, but, you know, a good run all in you all. Mean, you mean there's not another game to play? <laughs> it based seems on like they've been playing for, what are they get 150 games or something, it seems like they've played. I, I love Junior B hockey, but the Sutherland Cup playoff format just is convoluted and really doesn't make a lot of sense to me. You lose two or three and oh, you still have another shot. Yeah. Kind of like the TELUS Cup, but the good thing is the London Junior Knights are coming back to town with a silver medal.